Today we're going to focus on putting AI to work. More specifically, we're going to look at agentic AI in the digital factory. We built a series of AI agents that are able to work to create a digital product prototype for an analyst. Our analyst's name is Barry. Barry typically works with an IT liaison when he has a new program that he needs to support. You'll see a demonstration of how we can use generative AI to perform market analysis, to do service design, and also to create intake forms as an intake developer. We're gonna engage three of our factory workers today as part of our presentation. Before I start, I wanna recap what the product factory is so that you have at least a general background. If you want the full demonstration of the digital product factory, you can use this YouTube link that's in the description below. Barry is an analyst. His job is to act as the liaison between his department and the IT department. He's responsible for getting new requirements for programs that he supports. Andre, on the other hand, is the counterpart in IT that works with Barry. Andre is also swamped with work and he can't get Barry what he needs. This is the business problem that we're attacking. What we focused on for our analysis is deploying a new government service. And when you look at a value stream like this, that takes thousands of hours across governments across the world, where is there friction? Where can we reinvent the model so that we can deliver these in a much more efficient way? We start asking a lot of questions through all the different phases of the life cycle. What we learned is that a big part of the bottleneck is getting to prototype. How do I know if this thing that I'm going to use, this idea I have for a service, how do I even know it's going to work? Well, I need to get to a prototype before I can really understand that. When we ask people in government, how long does that take? How long does that take to get to a prototype? We learned that it's six to nine months in emails, back and forth things that go on just so that you can get that prototype. And you don't even know if it's going to work, but you spent all that time getting there another month after that to get your first iteration on top of that prototype if you do decide to go forward with it. When Barry comes in to get this prototype from his counterpart, Andre, what happens in that 10 months? That's the part that we're really going to attack today. How do we take all of that and reimagine it in this world of automation and AI? How do we take that and change so it's not the same as it was since the 80s? That's what we focus on in our first demo, is that automation. The factory takes you through from intake requirements all the way to the point where we're delivering an email and providing paths to promote that prototype. Our concept is to go from 10 months to 10 minutes and solve that business problem, saving governments across the world thousands of hours in wasted time. Today, we're just gonna look specifically at the Gentic AI portion of the digital factory. We still intake requirements, but there's some subtle changes on there that I'll describe when I go through the demonstration. We still use the App Engine Studio to build our product template. We use typical workflow to create agents and the assignment group. We create all of the users that we need to test this, not only creating the product, but everything we need to get it running. We build the delivery and support data models. So for those of you that know, it's common service data model underneath for support. And we use the public sector digital services models for the delivery of the services. Agentic AI operations will then come in based on some new input on the intake section, then pick up granting the developer roles, associating the users to the groups and models, everything we need to get it running. And then it sends instructions to Barry so that Barry can continue to test the prototype and make subsequent changes before he passes it along to the development team to put it into production. Digital Factory Services has the intake forms for all the factories that are loaded in the instance. Today, we're gonna to focus on the digital product factory for public sector. We're gonna use a public sector program support. I am acting as Andre. One of the things I might need is an application for a loan. Another thing that I might need is a request a counselor to provide business advice because you can go and get direct help from the federal government for business advice. And I might even need to, if I have a small business, uh, especially with what's going on with the fires right now in California, 
apply for disaster assistance for my small business. These are the ones where our agentic workers are going to take over and build these for me because it's not part of our template today. And all of the processing for our digital product request has happened, including the agentic AI operations component. What it did at the end was send me an email with instructions. When we open it up, you'll see the first part is to go to the constituent forms. In the first demonstration for the product factory, we showed you three forms that were part of the template. Now what we should see is the forms that are part of the static template, but also the new forms that were created by AI. All of the AI created content will have this image inside the content. We can pick one of those and open it up and actually see the content that was built by our AI agents. This one for request to counselor has an upload for business plans and any relevant documents, potential applicant or existing SBA loan recipient, created the public form, at least a starting point for it, asking me what I need as far as a counselor help. It did build out the models inside of the public sector digital services so that we have request to counselor service models as well as a service underneath that model. In the assignment group where these are being sent, so now we can route this request properly, and we also have it attached to the model for downstream reporting as needed. This is the how did we do that section. How did we use the technology on the ServiceNow platform to do what I just showed you? The main part of the digital product factory is a workflow called build new digital product. I wanna take you into a trace file for that build new digital product so that you can see what happened as we intake the request we got the catalog variables off of our request that we submitted. It went down to build the product template. And then after it created the product template, this is where it added all our users. After that, it went into configure the models. And then finally, at this point, it calls agentic operations. This is the one, the subflow, where it's calling the agentic agents. It's looping through each one of our directives. Those directives are the ones that we put in in the form earlier. It calls this create record producer. If I go into one of those specific workflows and we look at the directive that it actually processed, we can get a better idea of how these agents performed. Small business administration is the product name. I have the product description. The form type is the application for small business loan. This is one of the ones we asked for on our initial request. This generic prompt is a call out to Gemini. That prompt is you are a research analyst working for a digital service provider, and this is the digital product. So it, it inserts our variable inside the prompt. It goes on to give the description of our service, and this is the description we fed in the front end. Gemini came back with is a response that actually performed that analysis. Small business owners are our audience. Here's the value proposition, key features. I limited the words that I told Gemini to give me back so that I can control the, the size of that analysis. I might want to increase this or decrease this. That would be part of the tuning of my prompts. So that analysis then came down and passed it to a second AI agent. And this one is a service designer. You are a service designer. I now know all the information that my analysts found out, but I need to do more. I need to figure out what do I need in my forms in order to create this application for a loan. As it said, these are all the fields that we should gather from that user in order to process their loan request. So what the general ones can do really well is they can go over the whole web. So these are public LLMs that can get all the information from all of the different federal entities or state entities that are doing SBA loans and get that information into this research. The Now Assist record producer is really good at producing ServiceNow things, in this case, a record producer. So I gave it a description of the program. Here's some of the suggested fields that our analysts that came in from Gemini produced. It gives me an output that says, these are all the things that you need to put in your catalog item in a structure that I can build a catalog item from. With that structure, I now pass it to a cleaner and it turns this into a JSON set. Now we have to take the natural language that was returned from our generative AI and turn it into a set that we could use in a processor. It took this response in and our processor put this response out. 
but basically cleaned up all of the spaces and the tabs and all the things that we need to clean up in there. And now that we have something we can use, I can go into create a record and I can iterate through that script, produce this catalog item, which is our form that we saw in that front end. After it produces the catalog item, use this and go ahead and create for each item all the variables in that catalog item. It's going to build those, all the different things that I need to build those models underneath so that now it's a fully supported product. We have the models that we define and we add those models onto the request. So this way, when they come in, we know they're part of the SBA program. All the hard work is done. And that lets Barry now focus on the experience. How do I perfect those forms? How do I change the workflows? That's the goal of the product factory. And that's what we'll get from these type of AI assistants going forward. Today, we saw three autonomous AI agents in action. We saw an orchestrator work on behalf of Barry, our analysts, to do market analysis, create a service design, and create intake forms for our processes that were requested by our analysts. We then saw it close out the request by sending that email back to Barry so that he could start working on things right away. The next steps for this is to schedule a digital product factory workshop. We actually bring the factory to you and engage your people like Barry so that they can experience this firsthand. To do that, you can get in touch with your account team and start the process. We look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you very much.